Hello everyone, how are we all doing? Do hope that you're safe and well. For obvious reasons right now we can't meet in person for workshops, tutorials or demos. Therefore I'm going to be encouraging you to think creatively, to explore and discover art materials, tools, techniques that you undoubtedly have access to at home, things that you may never have thought of using for art before, things that we can repurpose in an imaginative way and use for visual art and creativity. So this is an online sort of uh, meetup to hopefully inspire you to be creative at home. This is the one good thing about this prolonged period, indefinite period of isolation at home when actually we can all return or turn to creativity Firstly, welcome to my slightly cluttered art space here at home. I've been racking my brains in recent days to think about the art materials and tools that we all have access to. And particularly, I've homed in on a few that I'm pretty sure you have at home somewhere in a cupboard. And um, we'll see where those take us. So, my first choice of art materials for today includes tea and coffee. I'm guessing you have those at home. Let's put the kettle on. I found these egg cups which double up quite nicely as makeshift pellets for tea and coffee. I've uh, been fishing around, we've got various, um, this is ordinary black tea and um, obviously freeze-dried coffee. I found some green tea, I found some really fruity strawberry and raspberry tea. We might experiment with those later on. Now, we can learn something from standard watercolours. If we open up this pack the colours are all in the form of very intense pigments, very highly concentrated in a solid form. So if we translate that into tea and coffee, we don't want to be diluting the pigment, which is the tea or the coffee, too much. Right, let's just start with the coffee. If you can find a dish or some shallow container to use as a palette, then uh, that's really good. If it has little shallow recesses in, that's really helpful. Now let's move on to coffee. You really want to think of it as a sort of soup. It's going to be really, really intense and thick as you can make it. Now, here's one I made earlier, which was two of these. And you can see that's even more intense and dark. So we've got quite a range For here. The it, let's actually add in one of the strawberry and raspberry. Red tea is not essential for what we're doing, but it's, it's just, you know, you might want to experiment at home, find different teas that you like. The smells of the different teas are just wonderful. <laughs> right, let's get back to the studio. So we've got our pigments laid out in front of us. The next job is to find some paper. You might be lucky and have some actual watercolour paper. This is um, really quite thick and uh, takes a lot of fluid without warping. Also has a really nice texture if you're, if you're into that. If you haven't got that sort of thing, I often think the, the back of a, of a greetings card works quite well. I've even got some backs of old cornflakes packets here, so we might experiment with those later. They've got a slight sort of greyish tinge relative to the white.
don't forget to make some of your favourite beverage along the way. Now, in terms of subject matter, you might want to just doodle, freestyle, play around with mark making techniques and that's absolutely fine. Or you might prefer to use an actual photo reference to base your work on. If you're looking for photo references, the issue often tends to be with the idea of copyright. Best thing to do is to avoid all of that. And I would strongly recommend a website like pixabay.com. Let's just find it on here. There we go, pixabay.com. So you can use these images in whatever way you want. You can credit the author, and I'm sure they'd appreciate it if you do, but you don't actually have to. Let's type in animals. Now, you'll see here that it immediately comes up with a whole array of animal photos and images. And I can immediately begin to see things that really strongly leap out for me in terms of being perfect for what we're doing here. I'm going to go with that one. Let's see. Free download. Now you can obviously choose which of these uh, resolutions you want, what size of image you want. I'll tend to go for the largest download. This allows you to give credit to the author or even to sort of, so to speak, contribute a small amount, buy them a coffee, so to speak, <laughs> or you can follow them. Okay, let's say save file, save on the desktop. There it is. Right, there's our image to work from. Now I'm going to bring this as close as I can to where we're working. I might just have to slightly shift things around. You, you may prefer to print this image out, of course, it's up to you. What I might just do is actually bring this as close as I possibly can to the, the image on the screen. And I'm just obviously protecting my laptop keyboard there. Right, now, over to some brushes. Okay, <laughs> now this is where it gets confusing. This is not painting water, this is my tea. Having said that, of course, we are working with tea and coffee. The distinctions are getting blurred all the time. I have got here some, what you might say, painting water, uh, just tap water. Another really, really useful tool is going to be a couple of sheets of kitchen towel. This is actually, as I said, a really useful tool in terms of controlling the amount of paint, let's call it paint for a moment, or pigment, on your brush or other tool, and or the amount of water. I have picked up here the back of a <laughs> rather cute card. Let's just tear that off there. This is purely in terms of, you know, thinking what can you find around the house. You don't have to go out and invest a huge amount in art materials. Art materials can be hugely expensive so make use with what you've got at home to begin with and then in future by all means go out and buy the proper kit. For now we'll just start with some really basic stuff. I'm guessing a lot of you will have a paintbrush at home. If you haven't we'll come on to other tools in a few minutes but um, I'm going to start with them because they are a, a, a fairly traditional painter's tool. Right. I've just sort of dipped that in the water. You can see immediately that I can use this piece of rag here to control the amount of water on there. At this stage, a lot of you will take a pencil and spend hours just drawing this all out meticulously to make a plan for your painting. Try and sort of skip that stage. Let's start with the bit of the tea. This is the tea, <laughs> just to be clear ordinary black tea. Obviously this is a different shape to this. So for example you might in this case want to sort of trim this down effectively, crop it down. I think that's what I'll do for simplicity's sake. Now very little, very little pigment. I will refer to this as pigment. 
um, on here but just should be just enough I think you can see that to see where we're going with this you can probably see where I'm looking the point about looking quickly from one to the other is so that you're constantly comparing and seeing both try to spend if anything more time looking at your reference than your actual painting your draftsmanship skills will improve immensely so very very loosely now what i'm looking at really is the angles just simplifying this down so we can simplify that down to almost a straight line straight line across there try not to get bogged down with detail gradually we want to build up towards more definition but i would sort of ease yourself towards that a little bit more of the coffee now and uh, try not to dilute it too much now i think this is the darkest pigment we've got really try and control where you're actually placing that with the amount of pressure as well so very little pressure and you can get a very very thin line if you want it notice around the eye you've got a very very thin dark line around that part of it thicker here really quite thick there so really begin to notice little details like that keep that looseness that you had right at the start carefully hold that up so you can see it a bit more clearly notice the different um, ways that I'm using the brush different uh, levels of pressure so sometimes I'm almost sort of tickling the paper and other times when I want real intense pigment I'm going to just al allow it to really spread more let's just see this might be this is just a plastic fork let's go a bit closer so you can actually see what I'm doing just individual it's individual spikes this is a little bit more like uh, the palette knife <laughs> with acrylics that i've been uh, demonstrating elsewhere if that's something you're interested in please do check out my other video on palette knife well i've got quite a few palette knife video tutorials notice the the importance of the different tones so this is really really intense dark whereas some of these lighter tones are going to be a lot a lot less intense again just using the bit of rag to in this case to mop up a little bit of paint where we don't want it You can always use your cotton bud just to sort of soften edges as well. Notice I've still got quite a lot of the white showing through at this stage and we'll try not to cover it up if I don't want to. Okay, let's leave that to dry.
So just to sort of recap briefly on the different techniques we've got available here. Obviously we've got brush. And don't forget that you can vary the pressure. Much as with many drawing mediums. Okay, we used something like a fork to spread the paint around to create interesting textures works really well for things like grasses whiskers fur etc similarly old toothbrushes for the spiky things just do that once more the Uh, again lots of lots and lots of applications for that you can probably invent your own techniques and methods for doing this but the results are quite lovely okay and uh, probably my favorite technique and um, let's just see what happens here You might want to even water the coffee down very slightly for this. Plastic straw or, or paper straw, whatever. There we go. Great fun to experiment with all of these. hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial demo call it what you will um, would love to hear how you get on uh, hope you have fun please do comment and like the video and uh, get in touch many thanks for watching and see you again soon